is up YouTube, it's Tom from Tech Time, and here at Tech Time we bring you all your tech all the time. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with our weekly content. Today I brought in a phone and I want to show it to you guys. It's a phone that's been around for a little while and it's something that I wanted but never picked up because the price and some of the complaints about it were all over the place. So now I have it in-house and that is the Essential Phone. This is in Halo Gray, and I'm really, really excited to give it a shot. This is a company that has stuck with it and really pushed out tons and tons and tons of updates on this phone, and they've tried to make things so much better, unlike some of these bigger companies that know they have issues and don't even attempt to fix it. I'm not saying that these updates have made this phone perfect, but I want to give it a shot, test it out, and see exactly what it can do. So we're going to get into the unboxing, and I'll catch you guys over there. Okay guys, so we're going to get into the unboxing, but first I want to ask for some of your feedback down in the comments below. Let me know how the audio sounds and the video looks. I'm using my Canon 10-18 to wide angle. Do you guys like wide angle? Would you like more something zoomed in right on the product? Doesn't show more of the background, just focuses on what I'm looking at because I do have other lenses that I can use and I don't mind using them. I'm just trying to give the best experience for my viewers, which are you. And then with the audio, let me know how it sounds because I switched back to a lav mic for these types of unboxings. Talking head, I'll still use my shotgun mic, but I noticed with the shotgun mic, depending on the angle I'm standing, I don't think it's picking up the audio as well as I wanted it to. So I'm trying to do this lav mic and hopefully the audio is better. So let me know down in the comments below. Feedback is great. You know, I'm learning as, as I grow and I'm learning. You know, I'm trying to make things better for all of you. And, you know, more visually appealing and, and better for me. I like positive feedback and that's what I want. But, like I said, if things aren't looking good, if the lighting's too low because I did lim dim the lighting a little bit to try to incorporate these LEDs in the background, let me know. Just give me a, a overall feedback down in the comments. I would really, really appreciate it. So let's get into the star of the show. This is the Essential PH1. This is a 128 gigabyte unlocked variant. And if you did not know and you were under a rock somewhere or you don't cover, you know, smartphones that heavily, this was $250 on Amazon Prime Day, which was a steal, 50% off. And then this little guy right here is a 360 degree camera, which connects to the back with pins. I've heard mixed reviews about it. Anyways, normally $199 was down to $19. That is just crazy. It could be because it's absolute trash, but who knows, we'll find out. The phone itself has mixed reviews. If you ask the guy in my group chat, Big Dog, big shout out to you, he said the phone, even at $250, is garbage and he wouldn't pick up another one. He owned it when it was a little bit higher priced and he said even at that cheap price, he wouldn't touch it. I'm hoping I don't have to side with him and I'm hoping that I like it enough to warrant the price tag, but I'm going to be basing my review and my impressions off the current price, not the sale price, of $500, which is what it's at right now. Because that's the fair price where everybody's going to be able to buy it from this point going forward, unless it drops again in a big way. So my review will be based on that price point. Can it keep up with other phones in that price range? So let's get into a quick overview of specs. This has a 5.71 inch, almost quad HD screen. It's a 13 12 by 2560. It has a Snapdragon 835 with four gigabytes of RAM, which is last year's processor. But with that said, the Snapdragon 835 runs really well and I had no issues on my phones last year. As long as optimizations were there, it can run super fast and be buttery smooth. I would definitely take this over some of the mid-range options out on the market today. Battery is a 3,040 milliamp hour battery. Nothing crazy, but that can do, it can do decent and normally get you a day if it's optimized well and you don't have a bunch of stuff hogging it. This is unlocked and it should have most bands for most companies. I don't believe Verizon, but it could possibly be because I do think this was on Sprint. Um, I'm going to be using it on T-Mobile and there has been some known issues with network issues and dropped calls and data and things like that. So hopefully... Um, they fixed that in some of these recent updates that they have. Well, who knows? We'll find out. This was released last August, so it's been out almost a year. And the one thing Essential has done is really pushed out updates. They've tried and tried to make the phone better. When it first came out, the, car, uh, the cameras were absolute trash. And there was a lot of other hiccups that came with the software and different things like that. 
they've tried hard, they've pushed out updates. Has it made it better? I don't know because I'll be using it just from the way it is now, but I'll let you know how it is now. And you can go check out other reviews. If I can think of some, then I'll re, uh, go link them. But you can go check out uh, Android Stud, definitely, because I know he pushed out a lot of content on the Essential phone, and he was actually somebody who seemed like they liked it pretty well. Going on into the specs, like I said, we have a 5.71 inch screen. It is an IPS LCD. Corning Gorilla Glass 5, and the body and design of this is what makes this phone a little bit different. It has Gorilla Glass on the front with titanium on the sides and ceramic on the back. So it's a little bit different variant of premium materials. Instead of glass on glass with aluminum holding it all together, you get a titanium with glass and ceramic. So a little bit different. When this first came out, it was running Nougat. Now it's upgraded to Android 8.1.1, I believe. It could just be 8.1 but it does have the Android P beta that you can pick up and it also has been rumored to gonna get Android Q. So that's pretty remarkable if it does. Like I said, Essential has stayed up to date with all the updates and things that you need for this phone and they're really pushing it heavy. They might not have a successor to this because they've had some issues internally with the company, probably didn't make nearly as much money as they wanted to and as much money as they dumped into it. But who knows, we'll see what happens. As of right now, they're still in the forums, they're still in Reddit asking people feedback and, and telling them things that are gonna be happening. So they're still really focused on this phone and that's great to hear because a lot of these major manufacturers like Samsung, LG, and not so much Apple, but Samsung and LG, they don't push out updates nearly as fast as they should if there's a problem. Most of the times it will stay until that next generation of phone comes out and then they'll kind of push out some, some kind of fix for it. This does not have a micro SD card so you get 128 gigs and that is it which shouldn't be a problem normally I have a 64 gig phone with a 64 gig um, internal uh, SD card with an SD card and I have no issues with that so I should be fine with 128 gigs you have a dual 13 megapixel camera f1 f1.9 you have a front facing camera it's an 8 megapixel f 2.2 but you can record 4k at 30 frames per second that's pretty remarkable i've seen some videos um, shout out to jay wills uh, i've seen his videos and his front facing camera he used it in his studio and i thought it looked really good oversaturated maybe a tad but presentation everything looked great i thought it was pretty pretty good for a front facing camera a lot better than you see on some of these other companies so you have you know all your wi-fi bands you have Bluetooth 5.0, you have GPS, NFC in there, yes, and then USB Type-C, reversible connector for your charging. So that's great. You have everything that you need in this phone. It is highly specced for the time a year ago, but it should still be able to keep up with all of the phones nowadays. So let's put the 360 camera off to the side and let's see this beauty. What are the box though? Look at the box on this. Really, really nice unboxing. On the side over here, Halo Gray, PH1. On the back, essential phone includes the essential phone, fast charger, cable, and an audio adapter because you do not have a headphone jack. That is not the, my favorite thing, but I can do without it. I've been posting a lot of um, options at the Bluetooth headphone section. So if you guys are interested in stuff like that, go check out my Bluetooth headphone playlist. Let's see how exactly. Oh, so it slides out. Nice, 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 nice. I like this unboxing, it looks really nice. So you got your phone, you got your dongle, you get your cable, which is actually a really nice cable, premium, and it's USB Type-C to Type-C, which is nice, not USB to Type-C, and then your fast charging brick, all in the box. You get your phone, let's take a look at this baby. Wow, that's nice. Peel that off. So this is supposed to be the gray. Maybe it is a gray. It looks blackish to me, but maybe it's a dark gray. Oh, yeah, I guess it is gray. Kind of like a matte finish. This is, to me, hopefully going to be better on fingerprints. Looks like it does leave a little bit of like a grease, but it fades up. There's your dual cameras on the back. There's your pins to connect uh, your 360 camera and some other options that are supposed to be coming out. There's your fingerprint sensor on the back. And wow, it really is a gorgeous, gorgeous phone. The glass curves into the titanium sides, which look really nice. You get your speaker down on the bottom with Type-C, your SIM card down on the bottom with a microphone. 
Over here, you got your volume rockers and then your power button. Nothing on the left side. And then at the top, no microphones on the top, which is a surprise. So we'll see how audio recording is. So this was one of the first phones, if not the first, with a notch. And it has just the notch for a camera. So they're hiding all the other sensors down here, I believe, in this chin. But I could be wrong. Let's turn this baby on and see if we have some power. Boom. Powered by Android. Like I said, guys, there's going to be a ton of updates. So I'm definitely going to have to pause the video, let you guys do what you do, and then I'll be back after this thing's all updated. But we'll see how far we can get into it before the updates start rolling in. To me, the screen looks nice. I've heard it's not as bright as other phones, so on you know, direct sunlight, that can be an issue. But right now, it looks nice. I like the, the near bezel-less on the top. So let's go, let's go. Insert a SIM card in the tray down below. We'll skip that for now. Copy your data, set up as new. So we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna have to do all that and come back, but let's open up this 360 camera real quick. Cut this baby open. Don't have a unboxing knife. So any company that's watching this wants to send me a nice unboxing knife to show off, let me know, holla at me. Another pull tab right here and that opens up. I actually really like their unboxing experience. Really, really nice and premium. You feel like you're getting something special. Pop this baby open, the box is tight and boom. There you go. Look at this little guy. 360 degree camera, can shoot in 4K. I'm assuming it's going to be like Samsung's 360 camera where you get two 2K videos and they stitch it together in the middle, but I could be wrong. Got a pull tab here, pull that baby off. And then we have a pull tab back here. Oh, there we go. Look at that, there's your connecting pins. This thing's actually really stealth looking. I like it a lot. What else do we get in the box? Uh, you get a little carrying case and then you get a manual. So that's not bad, no charging. So this thing obviously charges off of its um, phone that it's working off of. So it doesn't have any internal battery or anything like that. So that's nice. We're gonna get into setting this whole phone up. I'll get everything up to version where it needs to be. All the updates, probably gonna take a little bit and then I'll come back and check you guys out and let you know my first impressions. We'll play around with some camera settings and stuff like that, go through the interface and we'll see what it looks like. I'm hoping to be impressed, but who knows? So I'll catch you guys in a little bit. Okay guys, so we're back. It took quite a while to update this phone. There was so many updates, one after another after another. So when it was all said and done, let's see where we're at. So we're up to Android version 8.1 and security patch July 5th. Uh, check for another update because updates seem to come that quick. Nope, up to date, everything's there. Perfect. So first impressions of the phone. I like it, I like the form factor. It reminds me, the power button actually is a little, a little awkward to get used to. I hit the volume button multiple times. Um, but the form factor is nice. It is halo gray. It's really a gorgeous phone. It kind of reminds me with the titanium sides, the look of it kind of like an, like a, like, um, an iPhone 5 maybe. I like this style though. I like the screen. It's not the brightest on the outdoors. I went outdoors with it earlier when I was waiting for it to get set up. I had to run some errands. So I finally took it with me after it was all done set up and went out and did a couple things, and I got great call quality, great service on T-Mobile. No issues, but with that said, I'm not too far from Boston, so service around here is normally pretty great on T-Mobile, so I had no issues. If you're out in maybe a rural area or something, you might have issues, I'm not exactly sure. You'd have to check up on the forums on where the T-Mobile signal issues are coming from, but I thought it worked really well. I um, a running Nova Launcher on this. I used the regular stock launcher for a little bit. No issues, but I just like Nova Launcher. I did keep the rear um, wallpaper on, the original one. I do like that. I like the red with the black because I like a darker theme and that gives me that darker theme. I really like the front-facing camera. I think it's capable with all of the 
top flagships out there nowadays, like Samsung Galaxy S9, the LG G7. I thought it worked great. I'm going to add some footage in later when we get into a little bit more of the camera conversation of the front-facing camera. But I thought it worked out well. The rear-facing camera can use some work, but it's not terrible. I told you I'm going to be basing this on the price point that it is now. And the price point that it's going for right now is $420 on Amazon. The Halo Gray is currently out of stock till... I believe July 29th or something like that, but there is the pure white and also you can pick up the black version. So those are two good options to go pick up at $421. You really can't go wrong. So let's get in for, to some size comparisons. This is a 5.7 one inch screen. And this is the Samsung Galaxy S9. So you can see pretty close in size. This is actually smaller than the Galaxy S8. It does have a smaller screen, but it's also a little wider than the Galaxy S9. And because the Galaxy S9 has curved display, so that also makes it look narrower. But you can see right there that it's a little bit, it's a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. I don't mind the form factor. It feels good in the hand. It actually feels better in the hand than the Samsung Galaxy S9. Boy, we got Bigsby doing doing crazy stuff because I'm pressing buttons. Here is the LG G7, and that is a lot bigger than the Essential Phone. See the difference right there? And the width is about the same, but the G7 is definitely more curved down on the bottom. So those are just just things to think about. If that's what you're looking for is a bigger phone, this isn't a bigger phone. This is definitely a smaller sized phone, but I don't mind it. I do like larger phones, but I've gotten used to the smaller phone when I've used the Galaxy S9 as my daily driver. So this, this really doesn't bother me. Um, in terms of speed, this thing is super fast. I haven't had any hiccups at all running through you know basic interfaces and stuff like that, running through websites, no issues, running through videos online no problem uh, let's check out we'll go to my personal page my videos uh, check out this caseology video so there you go there's your screen real estate i don't think the speaker is the best for some reason it was listed as speakers but it's one and it's down the bottom i think it's easily covered because no speakers are on this side where the sim card is this one is down here so your palm does block it that's an issue it should be a dual speaker nowadays but you know this is a year old phone this is their first implementation and there's some other phones out there that are rocking more expensive phones that are rocking single speakers so the sound quality out of the single speaker is not bad but it can easily be covered so you know really not going to get the best sound quality out of that you don't have a headphone jack. I haven't used any headphones yet. I did hook up Bluetooth headphones. They worked great, paired very fast. No issues at all with that. Overly, so far, I'm, I'm digging it. I have not hooked up the 360 camera, so I'm going to hook that up right now for you guys and see how that goes live. I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. If we can even get it out of this goddamn box. This box is very, very tight on this for some reason. I don't know why. And there we go. We'll pop it out and we'll try to get this on live and see exactly how well it works. So you get your pins and you connect them. Wow, nice little blue light goes on. Fan kicks on. And let's see what happens on the front. Uh, 360 required update, so we'll update it. See how long that takes. Hopefully not too long. Probably should have done this at a different time. But I wanted to do it live and show you guys exactly how it hooks up. So we'll get the update going. We'll talk some more about the phone. Like I said, speed-wise, this thing has been beautiful. No hiccups. Obviously the first day. Battery life so far has been decent for me. Um, again, first day. So you expect that all my phones normally out of the box get decent battery life. One thing I can say about this thing, though, is it came out with about 35%, I think it was, of battery life. It's doing those updates. I threw it on the charger, and with the charger, the speed of it 
charging was unbelievable. Really quick, I think it's just Quick Charge 3.0 or maybe it's a proprietary charging software, but it charged super fast. Uh, I looked down and all of a sudden I had like 87% and it seemed like no time went by. I didn't exactly time it. I can time it you know, in the future when I do my full review, I'll let you guys know or I'll post something maybe on Twitter or Instagram, but charging is, is super fast on this. Definitely seems like it charges faster than my Samsung Galaxy S9. And to me, that's a great feature. You know what I'm saying? With phones nowadays, especially with these smaller batteries, they draw out pretty quick. I can normally get a day of work day out of them, but after that, I have to, you know, come home and charge them. And if a phone charges up super fast, that's nice. So it looks like we have our 360 camera going. We do. This is 4K, and like I said, I looked it up earlier, it's really two 2K cameras that are stitched together. So let's spin it all the way around. Whoa, hello guys. Pretty cool. Not bad at all. We can take a still photo. Check the still photo out, like a super wide angle. So really cool. It's actually pretty incredible. It's gonna take a second to load. It's actually pretty incredible that you have this option built into something you can just connect to your phone. I actually like this implementation better than Samsung's version of it. You can get out of it, the fan shuts off. So that's pretty cool that it has a fan built into it. It does have its own Snapdragon SOC built into it. So it does all the processing built in really quick. I believe it's like a 600 series or something into that. I'll let you guys know more about that in the full thing after I do some more testing on this, but that's pretty cool. The fan on it does cool it down a little bit. It did seem like it got hot kind of quick there. I don't know if that's going to be a sustained thing or it's going to end up cooling itself down when the fan kicks in a little bit more. But I think that's pretty cool that you even have that option. And at $19, what it was, I did see it on Amazon earlier for $90. Not sure if it was used. I was just scrolling through real quick. So that's an option. Like I said, $425 for this right now. I think it's a definite pickup at that price on my first impressions. I don't know how it's gonna go further, so I'm gonna have to wait to my full review to really give you guys a you know, top quality review and tell you to pick it up or not. One thing I wanna mention, the fingerprint sensor, I think works pretty good. The one thing I don't like though um, is the haptic feedback on this thing. It's, it feels like it's strong, the haptic motor, but it just seems like it, it maybe like a tick delayed or something. So I, I turned off vibrations for the most part. They don't really need to be on for me. I turn them on a multi, uh, turn them off on most of my phones. On this one, the it just the haptic mode. It seems a little weird. It seems powerful but weird. So I turned it off. That's something you guys might want to check out if you do pick it up. Overall, I'm impressed for first impressions. And at this price range, you know, it's competing with phones like maybe the Asus Zen phone or the Motorola Z3 Play. And I think it holds its own, if not surpasses those phones. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more reviewing and, and check it out against other phones. I'm gonna put it up against my two flagships that I have here. So right now, I'm gonna put in some videos and photos that I shot, and that will take you guys to the end of the video. Stay tuned for more. I have a bunch of cases coming for this from Tudia, so make sure you check those out if you're interested in some nice cases. One of them's got a ceramic back or a ceramic looking back. I'm not exactly sure if it's ceramic, but it should be really cool and it should match pretty well with this phone. So that's gonna be a great option. So we'll kick it off at the end right now with some photos and videos. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Just to give you a quick sample on what this can do and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. So guys, this is the front facing camera, 4K 30 frames per second, or at least that's what I expect it to be is based on the specs inside the camera interface and the app, you do not have any options to show you what frame rate it is, it just as HD 4K. Um, the interface is overly simplified. It's kind of weird if you're on the front facing camera, say in photo mode and you want to hit portrait, you're thinking it's going to be front facing portrait, it automatically spins the camera around to the rear facing camera. So those options should only be available when you're in the rear, fa uh, rear facing camera mode, but it's not, you have it in the front facing camera mode. So it's kind of screwy. I think it's overly simplified. It's it's not too intuitive. So there is some, um, some downfalls with the camera app. Overall, I think the cameras are decent. The front facing camera right here, 4K, low light. I got some LEDs and a, like one little light on the other side over here. So it's really low light right now. And I think it's recording pretty well. 4K, so I think the front-facing camera is capable, 8 megapixels, 
definitely worth a look if that's what something you're interested in and front facing cameras a priority in video wise for like IGTV or something like that. I think this could be a good option. And at the price point, it, you know, you get what you get, but it's not bad. I think 4K on a front-facing camera is pretty incredible. So I'm going to kick it back to the video right now, guys, and I'll check you back over there.